Hi everybody, Micah here from ebikeschool.com and welcome back to another Q&A question. Today's question comes from Savas Berdos, who asks, how does he choose the correct configuration of nickel strip for a battery based on battery parameters like voltage, capacity, current, etc.? Now this is a great question and it's something that a lot of people struggle with, so I wanted to make a video to discuss this. Now the number, size, and configuration of your nickel strips is almost entirely dictated by the amount of current that you plan to draw through your battery. In order to choose the number and configuration of nickel strips that you're going to use in your battery, you need to know how much current those nickel strips can carry. Now to do this, I like to use a table that was generated by a friend of mine, Damien René, from EV Madrid. On the left side of the table, you can see different sizes of nickel strip, and then on the right side are three columns with different currents. For each size of nickel strip, it's best to keep it under the optimal current. If you go all the way to the poor current, the nickel will start heating up considerably and waste a lot of energy as heat. I generally use 0.15 mm thick and 8 mm wide nickel strips, which are just slightly wider than the nickel strips in this row. Now, I always aim to keep the current below about 5 amps per strip, which is just about optimal. Now that you know how much current your nickel strips can handle, you simply divide the maximum current that you plan to draw through your battery by the amount of current that each strip can handle, and that'll give you the number of nickel strips that you need in each series connection. Now if that sounds complicated, don't worry, let's look at an example to make it all clear. Say I'm building a battery with four cells in parallel. It doesn't matter what the voltage is, i.e. how many parallel groups I have. It could be seven or 10 or 13, it, it doesn't matter. We'll just look at two parallels for now so we can see one set of series connections and make this simpler. Now let's say I want to draw 20 amps total from this battery. If I'm using my 0.15 mm thick and 8 mm wide nickel strips, I can only draw 5 amps across each strip to keep it in the optimal range. So 20 amps divided by 5 amps per strip gives me 4 strips total. Because I have 4 cells in parallel, I can make a single connection from each cell to the next, giving me 4 pieces of nickel strip, each carrying 5 amps, for a total of 20 amps. But what if I wanted to pull 40 amps from this battery? Well then I'd have to double up my nickel strips one on top of each other, giving me 8 strips, each capable of 5 amps each, for a total capacity of 40 amps being pulled across these nickel strips. On the other hand, if I only wanted to pull 10 amps from this battery, I could get away with only 2 series connections, as each would pull 5 amps, which is acceptable for this size of nickel strip. I like using this configuration of rows of parallel groups stabbed next to each other, because it makes it easy to include multiple series connections. But sometimes this isn't possible, and you're forced to do long rows of parallel groups in the same line. I'll show you a common mistake many people make regarding the nickel configuration in this setup. Many people will just use a single piece of nickel to connect a long row of cells like this in series. In this example, these eight cells include two parallel groups of four cells each. That single piece of nickel on top performs both a series connection and two parallel connections. The problem is that a single piece of nickel usually can't carry the full current required by the entire battery pack. For example, if I wanted to pull 20 amps from this battery, it'd be a problem, because that piece of nickel might only be capable of 5 amps. To solve this, you need to use multiple pieces of nickel stacked on top of each other. You could do it like this with 4 pieces stacked directly, but it's a bit wasteful, as you don't need 4 strips of nickel at the ends where the current is lower. Instead, you should use a pyramid structure like this, because each set of cells closer to the center where the series connection is will carry in an additional 5 amps. This is the most efficient way to lay your nickel strips if you use a long configuration of cells like this. But it's still better if you use parallel configurations when possible. That is to say, parallel groups that are physically in parallel rows to save material and increase the cell-to-cell -cell connections. All right, so I hope that answers your question, Savas. Remember, send me a private message here on YouTube with your contact info, and I will send you a free copy of my book, The Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, which is also available at ultimateebikeebook.com. Uh, and for anybody else, remember, uh, put your questions about electric bicycles or lithium batteries or anything else in the uh, comments below this video. I do my best to answer all the questions I can. And if I choose to make a video response to your question, I will send you a copy of my book as well. Now, for everyone who's stuck with me to the end of this video, I have a little bit of a treat for you. I've been working on a new project over the past many months now, and I'm excited to give you a sneak peek now that I've got it finished. I've been working on a new book, Do-It-Yourself Lithium Batteries, How to Build Your Own Battery Packs. And I'm really proud of this. It's just chock full of info, uh, everything I know about building lithium batteries. And I'm just really proud of this project. 
So I should be making another video soon to talk about what's in the book. And uh, I hope you look forward to that. So as always, thanks for watching.